Welcome to this What's New in Solid 2011 R1 video covering the operations section of the Assembly Wizard. In my opinion, these are some of the greatest enhancements that we've had in recent memory. And let's go ahead and take a look at those. We go into the Assembly Wizard, and notice I've got a construction method that I made named Rafix. If I go to the operations section, double click on Assembly Boring. I can choose if I don't want holes, or if I want to bore construction holes, or if I just want to use an IntelliJoint for my holes. Click the little arrow here, and these four IntelliJoints right here are new to Solid 2011 R1. I'll just choose this one right here. Now, if you go through the rest of your settings, you set up the boring pattern that you prefer and everywhere there is a hole on your parts it will assign the IntelliJoint that you chose in the very first question. So Rafix UCS, uh, Fixed Dial UCS, Conformat, a lot of those operations that we used to have as planet created standards now you've got them right here and can set them up through the construction method. Uh, let's go now to the frameless method I have here. I've converted it to a 32 millimeter. Go into operations, assembly boring. This one I'm just doing regular construction holes and you'll notice a new question here if you want to use a fixed head horizontal boring machine. So we say yes. I can set the number of spindles that I have in this particular scenario. I said I've got 10. I set the hole diameter and the depth in depth. I can tell the program if I want to center the holes on the thickness of the part. So if I've got a three quarter inch top and bottom, I would center it and the holes would have a center of three eighths of an inch. Or I could determine the distance from the bed to the middle of the holes. I'll just use nine and a half millimeter here. Then we set up the front and the rear distances to the holes then we can determine which spindles we want to use for drilling the holes. Now I said I had 10 and I'm just using the ones on the 64 millimeter spacing. Go next then we just ask the standard questions but we do have a new option when using a fixed head machine whether you want to drill your board parts that's your top stretchers, your front toes, your drawer stretchers, and your nailers. We want to bore those the same or if we want to do a different pattern. So I have a different pattern here of just three. And again I use the nine and a half from the bottom of the bed to the center of the hole. And probably the most asked for enhancement is blind datos built into the construction methods. No more going into the Planet UCS or the Bob Y UCS and trying to figure out what settings to change to make certain things happen. We now have the option when we go into the operations section, we go to dado joints, it asks us do you use the blind dado? So if we say yes, we then determine if we want to use a qualified blind dado or a full thickness. When you use the, the qualified tenon, as we call it, you get to determine what percentage of the material thickness you have for the tenon. So remember this is off of a percentage, so you just enter a whole number here, not a percentage or a decimal point. Your pocket width, if you're going to use a qualified tenon, you'll need a tool to come down and route out this area up here so you just determine what that width is so you can choose the desired tool basically. There's a setting in the screen to machine center asking if you extend your data links by the tool diameter and that setting is turned on by default for everyone so we gave you the option of if you want this construction method to suppress that particular setting 
you can say yes. If not, you can just let it extend out like the Screen to Machine Center says. Just like the Planet Blind Dado system, you get a front notch length setting. If you use a rear notch, you just say yes and turn on your rear notch. And then once you set up your blind dado settings, you then have the questions for what parts you use a blind dado on. This one, number 471, asks you about the unfinished back. Do we use a stop -a through or a blind dado on the back? What about the top? Do you do a stop -a through or a blind dado? And same thing for the bottom or the deck, stop through or blind fix shelves and shelves, nailers, partitions, and your end panels. When your end is captured, do you do a blind dado or a stop or a through? And again, your toes as well. How do you do a front toe? We talked about the blind dado system being added, but we also have the oversized values now, just like the planet oversized dado UCS we now have that set up if you want to make the width of your dados a little bit wider you can do that here if you want the dados to run a little longer you can set that here and if you want to specify a deeper depth you can set that here And the final thing to cover in the operations section of the assembly wizard is the machining branch that we added. If we double click on the machining it asks us which face of the part you want to perform your operations. So this is talking about the back. Do you want to machine your blind dado operations for example? If you're doing a qualified tenon do you want to machine that from the interior or from the exterior, this being the outer part of the cabinet? Machine back here or machine in here? What about on the top? Do you machine from the top side of it or from the bottom side of it? And the same thing for the bottom. Do you machine from the outside or the inside? You set the face determination on your nailers, your shelves, fixed shelves and drawers, your interior horizontal parts, and your partitions, and then your end panels. And finally, the front toe. Okay guys, that's all for this video. We certainly hope that you enjoy the new functionality that we added to the assembly wizard into the construction methods. Thank you for watching.